In this video, we are going to connect explosives to concepts taught in grade 12 chemistry. First, we will talk about organic chemistry and the functional groups behind it. Next, we will talk about collision theory and activation energy. After that, we will talk about enthalpy, and then Haber process, entropy, and redox reactions. An explosive is a substance that can use its own energy to cause a Explosives can be classified into two types, a low explosion and a high explosion. A low explosion deflagrates, which means the burning of material by igniting the layer of cold material beneath it. An example of low explosive is gunpowder. They are used as propellants, such as in a gun, and also burn at slower rates and high explosions. A high explosion detonates, which means an explosion that happens faster than the speed of sound. An example of high explosives is nitroglycerin, these explosives occur in a rapid decomposition reaction. Explosives have been quite helpful to the society and are not just found in war environments. They can be used in agriculture, fireworks, railroads, etc. Without them, breaking rock to make room for roads and highways would not be built as efficiently. The jewelry we wear and raw materials we use would not be as easily accessible without the use of explosives. Functional groups found in molecules that are responsible for certain chemical reactions are an important part of explosions. The functional groups that are common in explosives are called explosophores, where the high amounts of oxygen make them highly reactive oxidizers. Examples of these include chlorite, chlorate, perchlorate, and peroxide. The first three, when added to metal elements, create oxy salts, and the peroxide group added to metal elements make metal peroxide salts, both of which are powerful oxidizers. Even so, not all explosives use explosophores. With heavy metal azides such as lead azide, fulmates of heavy metals like mercury 2 fulmate and acetylides, for example, aluminum acetylide, also being highly reactive. Activation energy is the minimum collision energy needed for a successful reaction. There are multiple sources that can come from, but heat is the most common. Other sources that can induce a reaction include light, sound, and collisions. More collisions occur with greater surface area, resulting in a high reaction rate. Without sufficient amounts of energy present to reach a required minimum energy, the reaction will come to a stop. However, in certain cases, a single push over the needed collision energy will provide enough for the reaction to occur. These are often the dramatic, uncontrolled reactions that people know as explosions. There are two levels of activation, high and low activation energy. Explosions with high activation energy are reasonably safer and can be transported, molded, and moved about with care. This is because it requires a substantial amount of energy to initiate reaction. An example of this is TNT, the acronym for trinitroluene. On the other hand, there are explosives with such low activation energy that a light vibration can set them off. An example of this is nitroglycerin. Both levels of reaction are just two different paths to the same potential destruction. Enthalpy is the total internal energy of a substance at a constant pressure and can also be recovered. A change in heat while still at constant pressure shows that a change in the energy of the system has occurred. In explosives, the enthalpy of the explosion is approximated since it does not exactly happen at constant pressure. As the explosion takes place, the potential energy that was originally stored in the chemical bonds of the explosive material converts into the kinetic energy of the gaseous products formed. Energy is released and an exothermic reaction occurs. Exothermic reactions are the net release in energy and always produce a negative enthalpy of reaction. As the heat releases, the gas is expanding and releases heat and light. In this exothermic reaction graph, the potential energy of the reactants is greater than the potential energy of the products. Through the combustion decomposition reaction of explosives, the lost energy is released as heat. Additionally, the Haber process plays a part in explosives. In the year 1245, Friar Roger Bacon combined saltpeter, carbon, and sulfur to create gunpowder. The production of gunpowder involves a very powerful exothermic reaction. Potassium nitrate plus cyclooctosulfur plus carbon would create potassium sulfide plus carbon dioxide and nitrogen. 
Back in the day, the supply of saltpeter was limited, and the munitions industry could not get enough to meet the demand. However, today, saltpeter is mined in huge quantities. Before World War I, imports of nitrates, also called saltpeter, was depended on for weapons production. Without its own source of nitrates, Germany found itself in a very weak position. British domination of the seas prohibited Germany to receive imports of nitrates in large quantities needed for munitions manufacture. A German chemist, Haber, created nitrogen compounds through a process of making ammonia from hydrogen and nitrogen gases. This is called the Haber process, which is given by the following equation. Nitrogen and hydrogen would create ammonia. From ammonia, nitric acid is formed according to the equation below in a process called the Oswald process, where ammonium plus oxygen would create nitric acid and water. After the synthesis of nitric acid formation of sodium nitrate, ammonium nitrate and saltpeter was easily made based on the equation below. The Haber process and the Altswalt process revolutionized the explosives industry. Entropy is the measure of energy that spreads out during a process. The catastrophic cloud is produced by the breaking of the chemical bonds within the molecules of the explosive. Compared to enthalpy, the energy in entropy cannot be recovered. There are a few factors that contribute to increases in entropy. One of these is temperature. As temperature increases, the motion of particles becomes more chaotic. In explosives, heat is released to the surrounding area and therefore the temperature increases as well. As a result, explosives have higher entropy than an explosive that has not yet detonated. In this entropy versus temperature graph, it displays how as the temperature increases, so does the entropy. The boiling point of explosives is when they decompose. As a result, the explosives change from their solid or liquid form into a gas. Gases have the highest entropies and therefore explosives have high entropies. As we already know, redox reactions occur when one reactant loses electrons, known as oxidation, and another reactant gains electrons, known as reduction. An example of redox reactions in explosives comes from the decomposition of nitroglycerin, which is a high explosive. It decomposes into nitrogen, carbon dioxide, water vapor, and oxygen. Nitroglycerin is a very unstable explosive liquid that possesses three nitrate groups. They act as powerful oxidizing agents. Also, the hydrocarbon component acts as a fuel which is easily oxidized. By containing both an oxygen and a fuel, nitroglycerin is explosive. The decomposition reaction of nitroglycerin is as shows. 4 moles of nitroglycerin decomposes to become 12 moles of carbon dioxide, 10 moles of water, and 1 mole of oxygen. The products can then go through redox reactions to form a product such as nitrogen oxide. When in the air, nitrogen oxides can convert into nitric acid. As mentioned before, nitric acid can then be used in the production of explosives. Thank you for watching! Bye!